Okay, hi everyone. Um, we're gonna go ahead and start the advanced techniques. Um, you might notice that once you start to use water on watercolor paper, if you haven't stretched the paper, it starts to warp. Um, for techniques, I don't normally just warp, um, you know, take the time to stretch paper. We will do that for artworks. But a thing that I do often do is just tape it down onto a board, or um, if you have binder clips, which my students do, you can use that to kind of flatten the paper while you're working. Um, just keep in mind that you want to make sure that it's not in your way. Okay, so just a little helpful hint so that the water doesn't flow, right? So it's going to want to go downhill, so it's going to run this way if the paper is warped. Okay, so let's go back to our technique sheet. And we're gonna to go to the flip side and we're gonna try some of these advanced techniques. So we're gonna do wiping away. So for wiping away, what I often will use is like an ID, right? Something that's hard, um, a cheap credit card, a library card, or I'll cut myself a piece of like mat board so that's nice and stiff. And this works well if you um, want to kind of like squeegee off some of the color. So it's basically like lifting, but um, you're kind of scraping across. So be real careful not to damage the paper. So I'm using the same sheet that I finished with for my advanced techniques. It's not to waste paper. All right, so number 13. So let's go ahead and grab some pigment. Right, kind of pull it across and then use right another surface to kind of drag away some color right so it's one way of kind of creating a straight edge um, for your work number 14 is intentionally scratching in to a wet surface so we had mentioned before on bruising the paper that we don't want to do that, but often we break rules in art. And so it's okay as long as we have a reason. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and grab the green again. And let's say I have a leaf, right? And I wanna draw some dark lines on it. Um, you can use something with a sharp point um, I take a wooden brush. This is obviously an old brush that I probably don't use anymore because it's kind of falling apart, but I sharpened it in an electric sh pencil sharpener. And then you can scratch onto the surface. And because you're bruising the surface, the water is going to find its way into um, that leaf vein right, and make it darker. So that way you don't have to go back in later with like a small brush, but instead it's just automatically darkening, it's darkening itself. Um, also, this is often used for um, like shrubbery. So if you've got a background and you need a bunch of, you know, grasses or things like that, you can do that as well by scratching into the surface. Okay, so the next one that we have is going to be our different resists. And so one kind of resist that we have is a masking out fluid or a frisket. And so this stuff is typically made out of latex. So if you have a latex allergy, be really careful with this. Um, I will often use a bad brush, a brush that's kind of ruined um, for this. Um, normally, it's something you do with detail. We just use a little bit of this. Um, and this will preserve so the paper is white. So you need to apply this first when something is either light or white. And you can paint it on with a brush, right? If you've got big areas, often you'll use frisket film or masking film or tape instead. Um, if you want small little dots, I like toothpicks. And you can kind of drop in dots Oop, okay, I'm not getting it to flow here, All right? So sometimes you can get it to flow. And normally frisket is, or masking fluid is another color so that you see it, 
right? So this one happens to be gray. You have to let it dry first before you use it. Now my at-home students will not have this available to you because I wasn't able to purchase it in the supplies. But if you're in school and you wanna try this, you can. We're gonna to need to let that dry before we can use it again. So we'll come back to it. So I applied some color on top of the frisket once the frisket was dry, and then I let the paint dry. So you're gonna probably have to come back to this um, with color after the frisket is dry, then after the paint is dry. So once the paint is dry, you can see the paint's no longer shiny. What you can do is take like your finger, right? Just gently pull up, and you'll see that it will preserve whatever color or value or white of the paper that is left. So this is really good for leaving thin little delicate details of a lighter color there. So you wanna remove all of this. If you have a latex allergy, you do not want to use the liquid frisket. Um, for students at home, you won't have this available to you. So you don't need to try this and hopefully in the future, you'll get a chance to try it. All right, so on this separate sheet of paper, we're gonna go ahead and get started with some of the other techniques. So, let's see, so we're on number 16. 16 is one that you will not have at home either, and this is masking frisket or masking film. And what this is, is this is a sheet of almost like, um, like sticker paper in a way, right? So what I will often do is, let's say you have a shape that is drawn, right? And what you wanna do is cut a piece that is bigger than your object. Um, I normally like to get it to be at least an inch or two bigger than the actual, right? So what you do, is you peel off this filmy stuff, right? And you lay it on top of your watercolor paper, right? And so then you press it down to kind of relieve any air bubbles. And then what you do is you use an X-Acto knife and you carefully cut out the object. So this is a technique that I have students use when they're doing very messy materials, right? So I'm barely pressing, right? Um, what I typically do is drag the X-Acto knife towards me. And I try to follow the line. And normally I'll move the paper rather than move myself to get it to come unstuck. And so let's see if I forgot any area. So I'm gonna take off the middle. Let's say I am going to be sponge painting or splatter painting in the center part. So I'm gonna carefully lift this up, just gentle to make sure that I actually cut all of the areas. Looks like I didn't miss any areas, right? And then I might press it down again, especially around the edges, just to make sure, just to make sure that, um, there's no more air bubbles there. And I normally, I preserve this inside because I might use that for something else later, All right? And so then what you can do is in here is you can do a messy texture or um, technique. So for yours, I'm having you try to sponge. So in your set, you guys have a sponge that looks like this. One we're gonna keep clean, one we're gonna allow for it to be dirty. And so what you wanna do is make yourself some color. Let's grab maybe a color that might be like on a rock and put some in like the bigger area. Okay, and then what I can do is put my sponge into it and then I can tap it onto the surface. Now you can let that dry and then add another color onto it if you want to, or you can do it while it's wet. 
if you do it while it's while it's wet sometimes the colors will start to bleed together so it really depends on what kind of technique you want to do right so this also has some sponging on here if you're at home and you don't have the masking fluid you still have a sponge so let's go ahead and just try a sponge it might not be in a rock shape but you can at least experiment with it make sure that the sponge is dry right and that you only put a little bit of it into the paint so that you get the texture right and then when it's dry then you can peel this frisket off but wait for it to dry i'm doing this probably a little bit too soon so, so that you guys can see what it looks like but see how nice and clean the edges are sometimes if i use frisket film i'll save it and try to use it again for one of the other experiments this frisket film is really thin it's kind of like cellophane paper so i might not have so much luck okay so that's one of your friskets okay number 16 is sponge and so we just did that so Let's see, I have two 16s on this handout. Wow, lucky you guys, All right? So here is maybe where you can just try seeing what that looks like and what kind of textures you can create. All right, let's try a, a different color. All right, um, if you have sponges at home that are like natural sponges, like real sponges, they create different effects too. Well, that's squeaky sounding. All right. Sometimes if it's coming off too thick, you can blot it onto another surface so that it's a little bit drier. So this is kind of a dry brush or a dry technique. So that's your sponging. Okay, number 17. Um, this is using tape to mask out. Um, you could use masking tape. If I were to do masking tape, um, I have like painter's tape. If I were gonna do regular yellow-ish, masking tape like this stuff right I would put it on my clothing to get some of the stickiness off before you put it down so you apply it to the paper now one thing people do a lot with tape is that they always just do a design that's the thickness of the tape but you can cut the tape with scissors you can double it up or you can overlap it to get any width that you want Right? And then you can paint right? and it will resist the paint. Right? So basically anywhere that's under that tape is going to be white. Now with any of these resist techniques, I want to make sure that you guys know that you could always put a base color of something down, right? Then put the tape on top to reveal texture. So like I could put tape on top of the sponge and do the same thing. So you can really layer these textures on top of each other. Okay, the next one is wax resist. So we're gonna use the white crayon. You can also use colored crayon if you've got those at home. I really like that effect of crayon. This cover that I used for my grade book was done the very first year I started teaching. And this is all crayon with watercolor. I really like how the colors look together, right? But you could use old school, like if you don't frisk it, you could use some white crayon. The only problem is it's hard to kind of see. You can put it in thick, you can put it in thin right, by very pressing hard. And then let me show you the magic, right? So then you put it on top and you can see how the water will not grip where the crayon is. 
So I pressed hard here, so there's no paper showing. I pressed lightly here, so you can see how it has more of a speckled effect. Okay, this is still probably too early, but let's see what it looks like. Right, see how there's a nice crisp edge there with the tape? So I'm pulling, I'm like at a 95 degree angle to lift that up. Okay, so then the next technique that we have is texture with plastic wrap. A lot of these advanced techniques are things that you probably can find around the house, right? So you might have saran wrap and so I basically get myself a little piece, right? Um, at school, I've cut some for you. And so what you can do is paint in a wash of color. You wanna make sure that there's plenty of water in the color that you put down. And then you lay it down and you actually want it to be kind of wrinkly, right? And so then you lay it down. And then often I'll put something kind of heavy on top of it so that it holds in place. And so in a little bit, we will lift that up to reveal that it kind of looks like striations. It has a texture to it. The next one that you can do is some packing materials. You might have bubble wrap. This works very similar sort of fashion. So I think I'm gonna use the same color so we can kind of do a comparison of the textures, right? Put down the plastic or the paint. All right, and then lay it on top. I'm just gonna lift this here. This one probably needs me to hold it down too. You need to start to see how it's pulling the color up. And so it's gonna have a texture like that when we're done. So that's the bubble wrap. And then the next one that's very similar as well is going to be your wax paper. Now this one is kind of hit or miss for me. So once again, from the kitchen, wax, wax paper, I like to wrinkle it a little bit. And then you'll do it in the same sort of way. Now this one, you definitely need to hold it down because this will just fly away. So you gotta lock it into place, hold it down with something. And then 22 is we're going to use paper towel as texture. So you probably want to get yourself a nice clean piece of paper towel for this one. And the key for this is not to overdo it. So we're gonna put down some color. All right? And then kind of crumple up your paper towel, it depends if you want the texture of the paper towel, and then kind of press it in, and you can make some texture. Now something funky is on my paper. See all those little speckles? I don't know what that is. Let me try that again. Okay, so let's lift out. You can see how you can make some texture. So I might have done too much. Need some texture. Let's see. See the bubble wrap? I could probably let that sit just a little bit longer and it'll be even more crisp. See? Right, some funky textures. I think I'm gonna have to leave that one just a little bit longer though. Okay. Um, I'm gonna try the paper towel again. I'm not satisfied. Let's see what's going on here. Okay, so let's use, 
and soften it. There we go, that's prettier, all right? So it's got kind of striations too. You don't wanna sop up all of it. So let's say I wanna X that out and try this again, so 22. So just try the ones that you have materials for that you can do at home. If you don't have something, you can experiment with it later. Okay, the next one is alcohol. So you can use rubbing alcohol for this. I actually have my rubbing alcohol in this little container here. The only thing to keep in mind with rubbing alcohol is you don't want it to mix with your water. So you will probably want to clean your brush immediately after this, okay? So um, you're gonna grab a brush, uh, maybe like a nice little round brush to use to apply that. You could also apply it with maybe a straw or something like that. And you're going to go ahead and put down your paint. Make sure the color's pretty intense but watery. And then it will repel. So it's gonna actually kind of look like the opposite of the bubble wrap. So you kind of just create little drops. All right, so it like repels it. You can touch it onto the surface, but it's not quite as pretty as if you just place it onto the surface. Um, so this is just rubbing alcohol that you have in the bathroom. Let's go ahead and take this off, see what that looks like. So sometimes these things are hit or miss. I find a lot of these are good for backgrounds, um, especially when you're working more abstractly rather than trying to get like specific details. So the next one is one of those specialty ones too. This is with instant coffee. Now your normal coffee will not work for this. This has to be like Folgers crystals or, or um, what do they call it, baby coffee. So like Abuela, the, it's like a Mexican coffee, um, instant coffee. You want something that is water soluble. So your normal coffee grounds will not work for this. So what this is good for is if you want something to kind of look like it's browned out. So like a banana, right? It starts to brown out. Heck, I even have a banana on my stand here, right? So let's say I have a banana, right? And I want to start putting those speckles in. What you do is you sprinkle a little bit of instant coffee on it while it's wet, right? And that coffee will dissolve and you'll have brown speckles when you're done. So that's gonna take a little time to dissolve. Just make sure you don't put too much because I find if I do too much, it's very um, shiny. Okay, the next one is salt. You can use all different kinds of salt for this effect. Um, you can use like table salt. Oh, that's really a bright color here. You can use table salt, you can use kosher salt, you can use Himalayan sea salt, right? So basically you would just sprinkle a little bit of salt onto it, like you're like sprinkling to taste food. You don't wanna put too much on it and the water is gonna start to dissolve and you're gonna get some striations on this. The bigger salts typically do not dissolve clean away. So normally you have to pick those off a little bit later to get an effect. But you can experiment with all different kinds of salt. Okay. Splatter. For this next one, you're gonna need an old toothbrush, or you can use a brush for this. I like to use old toothbrushes, right? Um, you know, if you think it's kind of gross to use an old toothbrush that someone's used at your house, you could always use one of those free ones that you get from the dentist or go to a dollar store. Um, you could also boil water and, and make it sanitary. Um, but what you want to do is take a brush that's actually rather stiff. Um, you know, you could use one of your brushes in your set too and dunk it in there. 
and then you kind of make a mess of yourself and you kind of spritz the color onto it. I didn't get any of it to come out. Right, but you can see how this gets really messy, right? This is a technique that's really good to use with like frisket film. You know, you got frisket film here and then you can splatter around it. So I like the toothbrush because it gets a lot more coverage, right? And then if I lift up the frisket film, you can see where it's not splattered. Right? And then of course you could splatter different colors on top of each other if you wanted to, to get texture, right? But then you gotta go clean your hands. The next one that we have is watercolor pencils, watercolor oil pastels or crayons. Most of the time what these do is that you put them on dry, right? You put them real intense, right? And then Let's use less of them so we can see what it looks like. These are just Prismacolor watercolor pencils. The painting twos have them. Let me try here. See what happens when I go from light to dark. Okay. And so then you'll add just water to these and they'll melt. I'm not a big fan. I've never been a big fan of the color pencils. Let's see. See if we can get it go from dark to light. Yeah, I probably need to pick up some with a paper towel, right? Right? If you use this while this is still wet, you could damage the paper. So just be real careful they will kind of melt, but you probably want to be extra careful that you don't damage the paper and use them too much when they are wet. Okay. Um, so that's 27. Many of you won't have those at home and that's okay, right? The last one is just experimenting. Um, you know, people who are watercolor artists, um, as well as just artists in general, they figure out lots of ways to create texture. A lot of things from kitchens, how things are stored for fruit. Um, this was from a pizza. Um, a lot of these things can be used. Um, and you just kind of have to experiment with how you want to use them. I have found that um, with a lot of these textures, since they're kind of 3D, you don't want to add too much water to them. Um, you want to use kind of a dry brush, so you don't want a lot of paint, but you can kind of like push the pigment through screens or films and get different scales or textures. So that would be kind of cool for like, you know, a snake, right? Or putting something down like this and then sponging color through. Let's try this. Let's try it with a sponge, see if we can get, right? So that's like, once again, not a lot of water. So you can just experiment, right? Using anything that you might have at home and see if it works, right? Cheesecloth might work, fabric, who knows? A doily, lace, see what you have. Just make sure it's something that can get dirty. Have fun experimenting.